Lux presents Hollywood. Lux Radio Theater brings you Ginger Rogers in Tom, Dick, and Harry with Fergus Meredith, George Murphy, and Alan Marshall. Permission for the use of the radio title Tom, Dick, and Harry has been specially granted to the Lux Radio Theater this evening by the original radio team of Tom, Dick, and Harry appearing on several network programs. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. There was once a very rash producer who stood in front of his theater on opening night and shook hands with his friends as they arrived to see the play. He was rash because no producer ought to count on having any friends until the play is over, and he heard them applause. But I take my chances and follow his example, if that was possible, as the Lux Radio Theater opens its eighth season tonight. And there are five reasons why that wouldn't be a bit rash. Ginger Rogers, George Murphy... Alan Marshall and Burgess Meredith in the hit screenplay, Tom, Dick, and Harry. Although Tom, Dick, and Harry is about our 350th radio production, and the picture I've just finished, Reap the Wild Wind, is my 66th, your producer has lost none of the thrill of a first night. Every time it's a brand new adventure, like a hurricane. Past experience can't help you a bit. What does help the Lux Radio Theater is an audience that we feel is always on our side. An audience that never loses sight of the most important point of all. The fact that Lux Toilet Soap is the actual cornerstone of this playhouse. Of course, you know that that you don't have to buy our product to listen to these plays. So we know that when you do keep buying it, that pure white cake has justified all we've said about it. The proof of a soap is in the lather, just as the proof of a theater is in its plays. And in appreciation of your continued support of Lux Toilet Soap and this theater, we promise again this year to bring you the very best that Broadway and Hollywood can produce. And one of the best plays that Hollywood has produced this year is the RKO comedy Tom, Dick, and Harry, in which Ginger Rogers has not one nor two, but three leading men, all in love with her. And with George Murphy, Alan Marshall, and Burgess Meredith playing those parts, she's pursued by quality as well as quantity. Now the curtain goes up on a new season. We present the first act of Tom, Dick, and Harry, starring Ginger Rogers as Janie, with George Murphy as Tom, Alan Marshall as Dick, and Burgess Meredith as Harry. We're in the Strand Movie Theater, where the second feature of the evening is just drawing to a close. The hero and the heroine stand gazing deeply into each other's eyes. Come away with me, darling. I love you. No, John, no. You mustn't say that. Now the hero draws the heroine close to him. Oh, I'm sorry. Now the hero draws the heroine close to him and takes a long pause. Over there in the second seat off the aisle is Janie. That's her boyfriend, Tom, the fellow trying to hold her hand. Janie is young and very pretty. Doesn't even know he's there. She's completely carried away by the hero's next line. But you don't understand. I want you to marry me. Marry you? But, John, we live in two different worlds. You have money, position, everything. There's too great a gulf between us. Janie is scared now. Will the hero take her up on it? But no. He's only taking another pose. Darling, our love will build a bridge to cross that gulf. Oh, darling, I'm so, so happy. And so is Janie, the end. What's the matter, Janie? You weren't even eating your soda. Hey, Janie. Hmm? What are you thinking about? The picture. Wasn't it swell? Janie, do you think the movie was true to life? I mean, do you think a rich guy like that would marry a poor girl like that? 
Well, of course he would. He loved her, didn't he? Yeah. Well? Well, what? Well, of course. He loved her. Oh. Hey, Janie, how about if you and I drive out to Inspiration Point for a while, huh? Oh, not tonight, Tom. Why not? No, I just want to talk to you. That's what you always say. No, honest, this time I really mean it. Just talk. Come on, huh? Well, okay. But remember what you said. Kind of crowded out here, ain't it? A lot of cars tonight. Uh huh. Janie, I uh, I suppose tonight has seemed to you just like most any other night we've had a date together. Mm. Well, it hasn't been. Oh, I may have been acting the same, but something happened today that changes everything. Mm. Janie, listen. Hello, how are you? I'm glad to see you. And what does everyone want tonight? Ice cream? Now I got chocolate, vanilla, toffee, strawberry, burnt almond, Neapolitan, peach coffee, and all kinds of peppermint sticks. You left one out, mister. I don't think so, lady. Yes, you did. Let me see. Chocolate, vanilla, burnt almond, peach All right, all right. Break it up, break it up, will you, brother? We came out here to be alone. We want to talk a little bit privately. There's people concentrating here, but you're disturbing them. I'm surprised at you. Ice cream, get your ice cream. Do me a favor and pick the flavor I got all kinds Janie. Of he left oh, out pistachio. Oh, Janie, listen to me, will you? Oh, yes, where were you? Oh, something happened yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Well, what do you think it was? I don't know. I closed the R.J. Hamilton deal. Tom, you did Yes, I did. 30 special sedans. Tom, that's wonderful. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's nothing. What do you think else? Huh? I got promoted. Again? Yep. Right after I closed the deal, Mr. Burton called me in his private office and says, Tom, my boy, Burton Motors is proud to have you here with us, and we want you to know about it. And here it comes. Hang on. Yeah, Get ready. What? He says, from now on, you are the assistant sales manager. Assistant sales, gee. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, Janie, I was thinking yeah. you and I have been friends for a long time now. Huh? Well... Janie, you don't belong in a telephone company getting up every morning and plugging in calls for people all day. You deserve something better, and I'm going to get it for you. Huh? Well, well, what do you say? <laughs> well, what do you want me to say? Oh, Janie, now don't make out like you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm asking you to marry me. Oh, Tom! No. No? Yeah, no. I don't mean no exactly. I mean, well, no for now. I think maybe we'd better think about it a little bit. Hello, lady, you were right. I left out pistachio. You Are you in again? Will you get out please, of here? Please, please. What's the matter with your friend, lady? He's always yelling. You don't have to yell at me just because I'm a little obnoxious. A guy comes out to try and get a little privacy oh, in now me. Stop. Oh, now All right. Come on, let's get out of here. Isn't there any place in the world where a fella can get a little privacy? Turn on the ignition. Turn on the ignition. Well, good night, Tom. Night. You mad at me? Oh, not exactly mad. I just don't understand what you mean. You gotta think about oh, it. Oh, that's a pretty important step. I'm not sure yet. You want to marry a rich guy, is that it? If I love him. But, Janie, I tell you, I'm going to be rich in another two oh, years. Oh, Tom, it isn't that. You probably will be rich. And maybe if you weren't, I'd marry anyway. Well, then what's the trouble? Nothing. I just want to think. About it. Why? What good is it going to do to think about yeah. it? Oh, please say yes, Janie, please. You don't know what it means to me. I'll work my head off for you. I need you, Janie. I love you. I'd do anything. You do? i do what? Love me. Well, sure. Didn't I ever tell you? Nuh-uh. Well, sure. I love you more than anything. Why, every time I think about you... You, you melt inside like a candy bar? Yeah. <gasps> Oh, Janie, you gotta say yes, you gotta. I'll, I'll commit suicide if you don't. How? How? How do I know how? Say, what are you trying to do? Drive me nuts? I'm not asking for a dance. I'm asking you to marry me. Well, you're gonna put it like that. Well, all right. You, you mean you will? Yeah. Oh, boy. Ow! Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You I am sorry. Me. Oh, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean to do that. It's just a... Oh, Janie. It's all right. Oh, I'm Janie, you made me the happiest girl in the world. Girl, you No, said... no, I mean, I hope you are because I am. Oh, I'm all mixed up. I don't know what I mean, but you'll never regret this, Janie. Never. You know what I'll do? What? I'll sell a million cars for you. Hear me? Oh, a million cars. I bet you will, Tom. Hey, it's getting late. I better yeah. get home. Hey, I gotta get up early, you know. But, Tom... Oh, uh, will I see you Friday? Well, of course. <laughs> oh, Janie, if I could only tell you, if I could only... Yes, Janie. Tom. Oh, boy. Oh! oh good night, Janie. Oh, good See night. you Friday. Eight o'clock sharp. Good night. 
Hello, dear. Hello, Mom. Did you have a good time, dear? Well, hello, Pop. Hello, Janie. Have a good time? Well, I guess I'll go to bed. What'd you see? Hey. Janie, your sister's talking to you. <laughs> oh, what did you say, Bud? What picture did you see? Oh, the one at the Strand. Any good? Well, say, you folks want to hear some news? Tom proposed to me. No kidding? Tom proposed? What's more, I accepted him. Oh, Janie, that's wonderful. What's more, I may even marry him. Good night. She gets more and more adolescent every day. Oh, um, that feels good, doesn't it, Janie? It sure does, Janie. If I'm not tired, I won't sleep a wink. Good night, Janie. Go to sleep, Janie. I can't go to sleep. Pleasant dreams. But I'm wide awake. <gasps> See? We are gathered here in the presence of these witnesses. Gather around, witnesses. Who said that? Oh, the Justice of the Peace. He's going to marry you. Oh, he's not here. Of course he isn't. That's just a dream. Who's dream? Her dream. There's the Justice. Howdy, Janie. And there's Tom. Hello, Janie. This is our wedding day, Janie. Hold hands, folks. You, Janie, take this man to love, honor, and live happily ever after. No fair getting a divorce. I do. You, Tom, take this woman to love, honor, and sell a million cars as long as you both shall live. I do. I now pronounce you a lovely couple. Boy. Oh. Oh, I didn't mean that. Here, here, no fair punching the bride. Say, wait, where's the vine-covered cottage? You can't be happy without a vine-covered cottage. Bring on the vine-covered cottage. There it is. But no child. What's a home without a child? Bring on a one-year-old toddler. Wow! Junior, now stop. Oh, here comes Daddy, home from work. Janie, Janie, what do you think? I was promoted. I'm Junior, Junior, executive, executive, sales manager, vice president. I gotta sell a million of them. I gotta sell a million of them. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, dear. Yay! Another year has passed. Bring on another infant. Wow! Hello, darling. Hello, Hello. darling. Home from the office. Jamie, what do you think? I got promoted again. I'm the senior, senior executive, executive president. I got to sell a million of them. I got to sell a million of them. I got to sell a million of them. Yay! Yay. One more year. Let's have it. Wow! Jamie, Jamie, what do you think? I got promoted again. Now I'm the president. Yes, I know. You told me. No, I mean I'm president of the United States. Yay! Janie, that's being married to Tom. <laughs> How do you like it? I don't know, Janie. It's nice, but I know, no. <laughs> This is long distance. Your party does not answer, I'll call you back. Oh, Jenny, come on, tell me. You're not fair. If I had a secret, I'd tell you. Can't you wait a couple of minutes till we're off duty? Oh, I'll bet it isn't even anything important at all. You're just trying to keep... When you hear the tone, the time will be 4.58. You're just trying to keep me on pins and needles. Maybe, but wait till you hear this. This is long distance. I'd like to make a person-to-person -person call to New York, please. Your call, please. Columbus 50098. Columbus 50098. I want to speak to Miss Brenda Whitney, Jr. Miss Brenda Whitney, Jr. Your name and number, please. Richard Hamilton, Jr., 496. Mr. Richard Hamilton. Jr. Oh. Oh, will you hold the line, Mr. Hamilton, or shall I call you? I'll hold on. Um, New York, Columbus 50098. Gertrude, Gertrude, it's Archie Hamilton's son. No kidding. Yeah. I wonder what he looks like. Did you ever see him? No, but I saw his car yesterday. You saw his car? Yeah, and you should have seen it. About a mile long. Miss Brenda Whitney, Jr.? Middleton calling. Go ahead, please. Gee, it was swell. I wonder what he's saying to her. Well, why didn't you listen, you dope? No, I don't think I'd better. Anyway, I'm engaged to Tom now. You're engaged? Mm. Is that the secret? Uh-huh. Well, tell me about it. What did he say? I don't know. He just asked me to marry him. Well, well, where were you? Did he kiss you? If you'd have been me, would you have said yes? Are you crazy? Say, what's the matter with you? You talk like you aren't even happy about it. Well, of course I'm happy. What do you want me to do, float? <sighs> Five o'clock, let's grant. I don't understand you, Janie. After all, it isn't as though Tom wasn't handsome or something, and he's certainly got plenty of personality. Is there anything wrong with him? Oh, I don't know. I think maybe he gets promoted too much. 
Well, now I know you're crazy. Look, Gertie, look at that star up there. Starlight, Starbart, first star seen tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might. Have this wish, I wish tonight. What did you wish? You're not supposed to tell. Oh, go on. What did you wish? Mm, I wish I could meet a certain fellow. The one who just called New York, huh? Mm -hmm. R.G. Hamilton, huh? The one with the fancy uh -huh. car? Yeah, but what chance is it? Hey, 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 Jenny, Jenny, what? look, look, there it is, what? there it is. What? What? What's that car? He's going to stop right here for the light. Oh, oh Jenny, said I know that car. Any place it's his, I tell you. And that must be Mr. Hamilton. Oh, Gertie. Hello? Hello there. <laughs> I uh, live down that way, just the way you're going. Right. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. I'd love a ride home. <laughs> Look, I didn't... I, thank I... you. Goodbye, Gertie. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Goodbye, Jamie. Well, I stop by first house tonight. Wish I may wish my head wish I wish. You comfortable? Oh, yes, I'm fine. You know, you must think I'm somebody else. No, I don't. Why, we met before? Well, sort of. What? Uh, I suppose you think I'm awful forward, but it's all on account of the star... Kind of what? You know, Starlight, Starbucks, you know. Starlight, Starbucks? Yeah. I oh, live on Ice Beach next corner. Oh, that to the right? No, to the right. <laughs> it's a nice car. Well, the trouble with cars like this is it's hard to get parked. Oh, I guess. Yeah. Uh, my house is the third house. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess you think I'm awful. We'll probably never see each other again. You never will understand. Going tonight. Oh, well, I didn't mean No, I, didn't I know, mean I know you didn't mean I'm just impulsive. Eight o'clock, all right? Oh, sh Two bunches, though. Uh, this is my younger sister, Barbara. You mean Butch here? Yeah. We're old pals already, aren't we, Butch? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, shall we go? Don't come home too early. He's cute, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye, Butch. So long. Oh. Well, uh, where's your car? Why, do you mind walking? Oh, I'd love to. Good, I like to walk. Oh, I guess if you don't have to, you want to, huh? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Even if you don't want to, you may have to. You might as well want to... Say, that's a nice dress. Oh, I'm glad you like it. My mother made it. Really? Yeah, but... it's her hobby, you see. You know, I'm sort of sorry it's so nice in a way. Why? Well, you see, you went to all this trouble, you and your mother, about yeah. the dress and all that, and, and to tell you the truth, I, I ran a little short this week. I only got a dollar eighty cents on me. <laughs> 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 hey. What? What am I laughing at? <laughs> w weren't you driving down Main Street in that big car today? Sure. Well, but that what, wasn't Did that, you that. think that that was mine? Well, wasn't it? No. I, I was just delivering it. I'm a mechanic down at Slater's Garage. A mechanic? Yeah, we pick up and deliver. Hey, what'd you do that for? That's for trying to pick me up. Wait a minute. I'm going home. No, wait a minute. I didn't pick you up. Is it my fault? That... Look, what's your name? Janie. Well, mine's Harry. How do you do? How do you do? Listen, Janie, I, I'm really sorry about this. That's, that's all I can say now, you know. Why don't we go out anyway? I'll tell you what, I'll show you the best time you ever had in your life on a dollar eighty cents. Well, How about it? Well, you like movies? Sometimes. Come on. Well, how'd you like it? Well, it's not as good as the one at the Strand. The Strand? Oh, I saw that. That was awful. See, I bet you that that's where you got that idea. What idea? This idea that a girl can marry a millionaire. Hiya, Harry. Hiya, Roy. How's the boy? Well, why can't a girl marry a millionaire? Well, there's not enough millionaires. How many millionaires do you think there are? Oh, about a million millionaires. There are 9,653, and most of them are already married. Well, if they're married, maybe they've got sons. No, the rich have a very low birth rate. But they do have sons. Little teeny ones, little teeny ones. Come on, I'll buy you a hamburger. Two hamburgers. But, golly, you can't explain everything by numbers. No onions. You make it sound like a horse race. Well, that's what it is. got to figure the odds, you see. Well, sure, the odds are against any two people meeting. After all, there's something like two billion people in the world, and if a girl meets any fella, it's an accident, isn't it? Yeah, but that... Well, there's no reason why the accident can't be a rich fella instead of a poor fella. 
She's got a point there, brother. She's got a point. She's got nothing. Now, look, I'll tell you why. Now, the reason that the accident can't be a rich fella, see, is that the rich don't move in your circle. Well, why can't I move in their circle? Why can't she move in their yeah. Look, do you know the Hamiltons? Yeah. Sure. Now, suppose they give a party. Do they invite you? No. No. Do they invite the, the hamburger man? No. No. Do they invite that girl over there? Hiya, Harry. Hiya, Marge. Hiya. You're darn right they don't. They invite people from their own circle. And if they run out of them in this town, they import them from other towns. Right? Right. 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 Come on. I'll take you bowling. <laughs> So you see, honest, you never get a chance to move in that circle. You get, well, wait, one chance in a million. Yeah, but you... Here, do you want to bowl? I don't know how. I'll show you how to bowl. How are you, Joe? What do you know? I never heard such reasoning in all my see life. See if you can hold on to that ball. It just okay? doesn't make sense. No, you put you your two fingers happy. right in there. You see your thumb there. That's um, it. Oh, <laughs> That's heavy. I'm sorry, I forgot. To... Every day you read about girls marrying rich fellas. Every yeah, now day. Yeah, you hold this. I think you better take your shoes it's off. It's all please. books and it's all take a magazine. It's in it. all the newspapers. You got and the it's wrong all... clothes for bowling. I got the right clothes. I got the wrong fella. <laughs> just as natural for a girl to want to make a good marriage as this for a fella to want to get ahead. Stand about here, it's just I as think. though I were to say to you now, don't be ambitious. Don't try to be somebody. Don't try to be a success. I don't. What? Right, swing it. You swing. don't believe it. Success. I don't believe in it. Swing the ball. Well, I'm swinging well, Go ahead. I'm... One, two, uh, three. Get out! Oh, halfway down the alley. Jeannie, Jeannie, Jeannie. Jeannie, speak to me. Uh, well, what happened? Oh, I, don't, I forgot to tell you. You're supposed to let go of the ball. You honestly don't believe in success. Nope. But why? Well, I don't believe in it, that's all. I don't believe in biting and scratching and climbing over but people. But you want to have money and you want them up to something, don't you? Yes, I what? do, but I'm not going to kick people around to get it. That's all I like, people. Well, so do I. Some of my best friends are people. Sure, that's it. And if ambition, see, if ambition means lying and conniving and, 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 and cutting people's throats, then it's not worth it. Oh, here's your place, isn't it? Yeah. Well, what is the answer, then? Being satisfied with what you have... No, I don't... I don't know what... Well, I suppose the answer is to get ahead, all right, but without slugging everybody all the time. I don't believe in this every man for himself because I get lonesome. Yeah. You know what I think? What? I think you're wrong. You do? You see, I've been going with a fellow named Tom. Yeah. Works for Brick Motor Sales Cars, and he's ambitious, and he's trying to get ahead, but he doesn't go around slugging people. No, I No, didn't... he doesn't. And he's a very nice fellow, and he's going to get someplace, too. I don't... Well, he is. And it just so happens that I'm even thinking of maybe marrying him, even. What? Hmm. Uh, maybe you may better marry me instead. Oh, now, oh, you shouldn't say things like that. Why not? Why, I, I hardly know you. Listen, sometimes people know each other better in one night than they do in two weeks. They do? Sure, how about it, Janie? Huh? Look, I've been looking for the right uh, girl for a long time, and... Janie, you're wonderful. I am. You better, and if you say yes, I yes. promise you, you'll never be sorry because I'll, I'll take you fishing every day. Oh, I, I think we ought to know each other better before we discuss Listen, this I tell any you that further. I do know you, and I think maybe I'm in love with you. You are. I think so. When will you know? <laughs> Shouldn't be long now. Listen, I better go will in. You kiss I, me? I know. Please yes, kiss. All right, but after that, I'd better go in. Hmm. Huh? Yeah. Well, like bells, like, like bells. Yes. I suppose that was a church. No, there's no church around here. No. You know what it is? Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. Ever hear it before? Never. Well, then, how do you know what it means? It's obvious. Oh, it's obvious. You know what I think? I think maybe you better kiss me again. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, what do you know? Oh, Janie. Will you marry me, Tom? Oh, no. Say yes. Why not? Is it, oh. Is it this fella, Tom? Oh, I. Uh, you don't love Tom. I'm in a way. Oh, no, you don't love him. You don't ring bells with it. No, but I didn't. Say yes, Janie, please. Well, if please. you really 
Want to consider yourself engaged to me? I guess you can. Oh, Janie, Janie. <sighs> oh. <sighs> Will I see you maybe tomorrow night? Yeah, no. Why? Well, I got a date. With Tom? Yeah, oh. Tom, it wouldn't be, you know, very... All right, can't all right. I know. Like I'll call you. Know. you. Call me. Good night, darling. Good night, Harry. Good night, darling. Good night, darling. Just a moment, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Ginger Rogers, Burgess Meredith, George Murphy, and Alan Marshall, will bring us Act Two of Tom, Dick, and Harry. And now, while we're waiting, here's a conversation that took place in a little Hollywood restaurant the other day. Two business girls came in. My goodness, wouldn't you think they'd change the menu in here once in a while? Sandwiches, tuna fish salad, chicken salad, ham. I'm going to sprout fins or feathers any day now. For heaven's sake, Gladys, what are you staring at? Mary, that girl over there. She looks just like Barbara Stanwyck. Where? Oh. Oh, no, Gladys. Her hair is about the right shade of red, and her features are kind of similar. Oh, but yes, I see now. Her complexion. Well, Barbara Stanwyck has the most velvety, smooth skin I ever saw. But this girl... Oh, well, that's all. Everywhere, all over the country... Women and men recognize the fact that famous Hollywood screen stars have beautiful, appealing complexions. They have to have, for they face trying close-ups every day. But do you know what care screen stars depend on to help their skin stay lovely? Active lather facials with gentle white Lux toilet soap. It's a simple care you can use at home. You just pat Lux soap's creamy, rich, active lather lightly into your skin. Rinse with warm water, then a dash of cool. Next, pat your skin dry with a soft towel. Then see how much smoother your skin feels, how fresh it looks. For 30 days, give your skin these active lather facials that care for Hollywood's million-dollar complexions. You'll find they're a wonderful aid in keeping your own precious complexion lovely enough to pass your close-up test, the close-ups you face every day with colors and compliments flying. Try Lux Toilet Soap, the beauty soap of the stars. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Tom, Dick, and Harry, starring Ginger Rogers as Janie, with George Murphy as Tom, Alan Marshall as Dick, and Burgess Meredith as Harry. Engaged to Tom, engaged to Harry, engaged to Tom, engaged to Harry, engaged to Tom. All night long, that great problem revolves in Janie's pretty head. Tossing and turning in her bed, she dreams now of marriage with her brand new fiancé. Here comes the bride, and here comes the bridegroom, and here comes the justice dancing down the aisle. So, Janie, because that leaves girls like you and fellas like him, do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. And do you? Hiya, Harry. Hiya, Judge. I now pronounce you man and wife, and Janie, I think you're making a big mistake. Bring on the tumble-down shanty. Shanty? Where's the vine-covered cottage? One year later, bring on that kid that looks like Harry. <laughs> Harry Jr., stop crying. Harry, Harry Sr., I'm calling you. Well, just a minute, dear. I'm playing Jack. Harry, but... I can't stop now. I'm on 90. But aren't you going to work, Harry? Work? Work? I don't believe in it. Hiya, Pop. Hiya, Harry. Two years later, another bundle of joy. Wow! <laughs> Harry, go to work, dear. Jenny, Jenny, what do you think? I'm on Kenzie's. Yay! Another year goes by. What do you say? Ah! 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 Ah!
Janie, Janie, I got great news for you. I'll never have to go to work again. We can go fishing every day. Why? What happened? I just lost my job. Yippee! Yippee! There it is, Janie. Love in a shanty. What do you think? I know, no. I know, no. Hello? Burton Motors. Oh, yes, Mr. Burton. This is Tom. What's that? Yes, Mr. Burton, I'm keeping the showroom open this evening. Yes, sir, I've got that little sedan right up in the front window. I thought that... Oh, uh, Mr. Burton, the prospect just walked in. Yes, sir. Yes, I'll call you later, sir. Well, well, good evening, good evening. Hello. And uh, what can I do for you this evening? Hmm? Did you drop in to look over the new models? Yeah, that's pretty neat. Pretty Tom, nice yeah. little job, isn't she? Best little car in the market. It's all right. Is your name Tom? Yes, it is. That's what I thought. Uh, did uh, someone refer you to me? Hmm? No, I heard about you. Oh, I around. see. You heard, and you yeah. just dropped in to look us over, huh? Look you over, yeah. Well, that's very nice of <laughs> you. Very nice indeed. <laughs> I, uh, I don't believe I caught the name. I don't believe I threw it. Didn't throw it, huh? <laughs> That's very funny. Yeah, well, anyway, my name's Harry. Harry. Well, Harry, was there anything particular you had in mind? Me? Mm, no. I well, didn't. now, there's a little car over there, the finest yeah. thing on the market. And the most amazing thing about her is the price. Only $598. 598 that delivered? Well, no, that's not delivered. That's uh, FOB Detroit. FOB, yeah. Uh, yes, that would run you, let's see, a 732 delivered. 732. Well, very nice bumper there. Oh, do you like that? Mm -hmm. Well, I can arrange to have a set of those put on a car for you for just a few pennies extra. How many pennies would you say? Well, uh, let me see. I said a model like this, completely equipped. I get it for your wholesale, of course. Yeah. It'd run... Uh, Eight hundred and eighty-six dollars. Eight hundred and eighty-six? You mean that's the whole thing? That now. is the whole thing, oh, absolutely. Right. Of course, that doesn't include the sales tax and your license plates. No, no, no. The... Look, how much does the whole thing cost? You know, all together, the grand total? The grand, grand total? total? Well, now, wait, I'll figure it for you. No there it fudging. Is, my friend. No fudging. The whole thing, everything in, fully equipped in your garage, and you'll be proud of her. Eleven hundred and seven dollars. Eleven hundred and seven. That's right. It's amazing. Well, after all, it's not what you pay, it's what you get. I'll tell you what. Why don't you let me give you a little demonstration? Right now? Why, sure, why not? It's Friday night, a great night to relax. Look, you got a date. I mean, you, I mean, haven't you got something you'd like to do? Or... Why, no, there's nothing that I'd like to do that's more important than making you a member of our little happy customers club. Uh, Say, you a married man? Not exactly. No. Well, uh, <clears throat> I bet you got a girlfriend, haven't you? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> why don't we show the car to her? What? We'll drive out there, pick her up, and I'll take you both for a ride. Both of us? Why not? No, I don't think so. Oh, I, I hold don't... on. Wait a minute. No, hold no, on, no, brother. No. After all, she's no. the one you want to please, right? No, yeah, but I... Well, it's a perfect night for a ride. You and the girlfriend climb a little old back seat Look. there and just relax, and I'll take you any place Look, you want to go. This is not a good idea. Oh, now, hold on. Hold on. Wait just a second. I'll make you... a little phone call here and cancel a little appointment. Look, don't do it, will you, please? Now, I don't want to inconvenience oh, you. Please, please. No inconvenience at all. It's all settled. We're all going for a ride together. Okay? Okay. And, uh, listen. When we get there, I want you and the girlfriend to climb right in that little old back seat and, you know, just forget that I'm here. You know what I mean? Forget that you're there. All right. She lives right along here someplace. Yeah. Notice the way she takes the bumps? Mm. Hardly any vibration at all. Smooth as a kitten. Smooth. Here it is. Where? Right here, third house. The third house? Say, listen. Just a minute. Be right out. Hey, wait a minute. Are you sure this is the right place? Sure I am. Here she is. Hello, Janie. Hello, what's this? Nice car, huh? This gentleman's uh, going to give us a demonstration. Beautiful. It's... Oh. What's the matter? Oh, that's... That's Tom. Yes, I know it's But Tom. he's the fellow I told you I've been going steady, you he know. He talked his way into it. He's very forceful. Come on. Fine thing. I turn my head and you're out with another guy. Standing me up so you can show for people around, fine thing. Get in, Janie. Say, Janie tells me that you two know each other. Yes. Small world, isn't it? So-so. <laughs> Was there uh, any place in particular you wanted to go? No. Oh, yes. You might drive us to Inspiration Point. Inspiration. Huh? Okay. He's very nice, Janie. Well, why he doesn't punch in your nose, I don't know. Like I told you, ambition. All I can say is it certainly shows a very mean streak in your character. Yeah. <laughs> 
I, uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I say, I beg your pardon. Mm-hmm. I don't mean to interrupt, but could I have just one little word Certainly. in Certainly. What is it? Do you like the car? I love it. Uh, do you like it, miss? Yes, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Are you enjoying the demonstration? Yeah, it's been thrilling so far. Well, thank you very much. <sighs> it pleases me. It's over now. What's that? I say it's over now. What's the matter? Well, uh, this is Inspiration Point. Oh, it is. Oh, it's lovely. Isn't no, it lovely? No, no, you don't seem to get the idea. This is the place you said you wanted to come to, isn't it? Oh, you mean you want us to get out? That's right, oh, that's right. Now I... you're beginning to get the idea. Gee, will you come, my dear? Let's get out. Nice work, Thomas. Thank you very much, Harry. I'm always glad to bring young couples out here because I know how many memories a place like this can hold. Uh, excuse me, please, miss. Uh, notice how solidly the doors close? Now, any time you and the young lady have nothing better to do, I'll be glad to drive you around and show you any of the other points of interest. Good night. I don't like that man's attitude. He'll never get to be president. He's a sorehead. I knew this had happened to me. I just knew it. I said to myself, I said, Janie, I said, before this evening is over, you'll be walking. Oh, hello, how are you, and how is everybody? And what does everyone want tonight? Ice cream? Hello, Harry. How are you? How are you? How are you? Fine. How's business, Phil? Oh, terrible. People don't like me. Say, Harry, what are you doing out here without a car? It's a long story. Anybody I know around here? Why, you want a lift? Yes, I'm... Hey, Mr. Hamilton. That's Dick Hamilton. We're all set. Mr. Richard Hamilton, Jr.? Sure. Hello, Mr. Hamilton. Hello, Harry. What are you doing out here without a car? Well, I just took a notion. Say, uh, could you, I mean, are you going into town? Why, sure, hop in. Well, look, I got a friend with me. Would it be well, all right? of course it's all right. All right, Janie, come on. Get in. Janie! I'm, uh, I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Hamilton. How do you do? I'm sorry, Janie, this is Mr. Hamilton. Oh, I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Hamilton. How do you do? Well, uh, hop in. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Hamilton. <laughs> We are. Thanks a lot, Mr. Hamilton. That was nothing at all. Good night, Janie. Mr. Hamilton, I, uh... uh, Mr. Hamilton, I, uh... She's glad to meet you, Mr. Hamilton. Good night. Good night. Good night. night. Well, I guess that was pretty lucky, huh? (laughs) Good night, Harry. What do you mean, good night? (laughs) And you said I'd never get a chance to meet him. (laughs) You don't call that meeting him, do you? You didn't say a word to you all the way here. We were properly introduced by mutual acquaintance. So you better go home and revise your statistics. No. Good night. Janie, wait. Go to sleep, Janie. I'm not tired. Go to sleep, Janie. Engaged to Tom, engaged to Harry. Richard Hamilton, Jr. Mmm, he's pretty. There she is, Mrs. Richard Hamilton, Jr. I remember the day I married them. It seems like yesterday, except they have three children now. Lovely brat. Bring on the stately mansion. Bring on the brat. Major! Major, dear, is it true that you were once a telephone operator? Major, dear? Why, that is the silliest gossip I've ever heard. It's absurd. This is long distance. Oh. Major! Isn't she dazzling? Look at all the people looking at her. Everybody wear your sunglasses. I'm too dazzling. I'll blind you. Just one more picture, Mrs. Hamilton. Just one more picture. Just one more, Mrs. Hamilton. She's the same sweet, unspurled girl. You mean you knew her when, Gertrude? Of course I knew her when. What was she like when she was when? The same sweet, unspurled girl. Hey, take my picture. Take my picture. Take my picture. Take her picture and everybody gather around. Ladies and gentlemen, a toast to our guest of honor, a woman of unspeakable beauty, of simple graciousness and blushing modesty, Janie Hamilton. Janie Hamilton! Janie, my darling. Richard, sweet. Janie, you are the most beautiful woman here. You are the most beautiful woman anywhere. And to think I might have married Brenda Whitney, Jr., Columbus Fire, 0098. Columbus Fire, 0098. She does not answer. This is Richard Hamilton, Jr. What do you think, Janie? What do you think? Oh, Janie, wouldn't that be grand? (laughs) 
After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille and our stars Ginger Rogers, Burgess Meredith, George Murphy, and Alan Marshall will bring us Act Three of Tom, Dick, and Harry. And now here's Sally. Well, Sally, you've got that gleam in your eye again. Well, Mr. Ruick, I've got a few rhymes written down here. I thought them up while I was taking my bath. Uh, Sally, and... I know people who sing in the bathtub, but poetry must have been a luxe toilet soap bath, Sally. Well, naturally. You see, I got to thinking how awful it would be to have to do without Lux soap. Now, take Cleopatra, for instance. Why, soap wasn't even invented in her day. So? So, let's have those verses, Sally. Well, here it goes. <clears throat> the care of their beauty was quite a stiff duty for ladies who lived long ago. They bathed in sweet lotions, used unguents and potions. But a luxury toilet soap? No. Take Cleo the charmer. It seemed not to harm her to bathe in the Green River Nile. But we'd have felt chilly and just a bit silly, unsurrounded by walls of white tile. A bath that is milky might keep my skin silky, thought lovely Marie Antoinette. Her milk bath was tricky, but terribly sticky. There was no Lux toilet soap yet. Today, what a pleasure to ask for that treasure with lather so rich and so fine. Now bathing is ducky. And I'll say I'm lucky that lovely Lux soap can be mine. <laughs> Sally, you've got something there. Life would be unhappy for lots of charming ladies without their daily Lux soap bath that makes daintiness sure. You see, Lux soap has active lather that makes a wonderful beauty bath. Rich, creamy, active lather that carries away perspiration, every trace of dust and dirt. It's a real beauty bath because it leaves skin fragrant, really sweet. And to benefit by this inexpensive luxury, all the 20th century ladies need to do is call up their store and order Lux toilet soap. It's as simple as that to enjoy the same fine soap that lovely Hollywood screen stars use regularly. Gentle white Lux toilet soap with creamy, active lather. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. The curtain rises on the third act of Tom, Dick, and Harry. <laughs> Engaged to Tom, engaged to Harry, but Richard Hamilton Jr., mmm, he's pretty. Engaged to Tom, engaged That's the substance of Janie's dream, and the problem is becoming a little too much to handle. But now the dream is over, and part of it has come true, for Richard Hamilton Jr. has called Janie, and they're out on a date. Not an ordinary date, either. For Mr. Hamilton, modern knight of the shining airplane, has flown her to a nightclub in Chicago. Golly, how did I get here? <laughs> Magic carpet, wings of love. <laughs> Do you suppose we'll be home by 12 o'clock? Well, what happens at 12? Do you turn into a pumpkin? <laughs> no. No, but you should be over by 12 o'clock because you're a birthday party. Beg your pardon? You're Jenny Shapiro's birthday party. That's where I told my mother I was going. Oh. <laughs> well, here's to Jenny Shapiro. May she live long and prosper, and may her party last forever. <laughs> Tell me, are you married? I don't think so. Why? Oh, just wondering. <laughs> I'm not married either. Hmm? I'm not married. Oh, well, <laughs> congratulations. Uh, do you see anything on the menu that you'd like? Oh, I think I'll have some um, lock. Uh, oh, <laughs> why don't you order for the both of us? All right. Yeah, better. <laughs> oh, I suppose you think I've never been in a restaurant like this before. Why, on the contrary, I'm sure you have. Well, I have. Well, that's what I said. Of course, I've been proposed to. You have? I've been proposed to twice. Two different fellas. You're a lucky girl. But I'm not married. <laughs> More champagne, please. <laughs> I... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Why does it whenever I drink champagne make me sneeze? Well, there's no accounting theme. Oh, I suppose you think I've never had champagne before. Now, why should I think that? Well, I have. All right. Lots of times. Say, did I ask you if you were married? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what did I say? I said no. Ha, <laughs> that's what I thought you said. <laughs> what time is it? Oh, it's about three. Oh, that's good, because I don't have to be home till twelve. I suppose you think I've never been on an airplane before. Well, you have. Well, I have. I flew to Chicago once, Ava. Yes, that's what I said. That's what I said. Janie, uh, tell me something. What? What's the difference between a radio and a clothesline? Huh? It's a riddle. It's a riddle. Oh, <laughs> that's wonderful. <laughs> Now I got one for you. Yeah, but I... I got one for you now. I didn't finish. I like that. <laughs> That's wonderful. Now, look, I'm going to ask you. You ask me, see, this is going to kill you. <laughs> you say to me... Yeah? You uh, say to me, will you marry now? Go ahead. All say, right, all right. Go well, ahead. Well, what's for? Then? Oh, it's a real... <laughs> this is going to murder you. <laughs> now, go ahead. Go ahead. Ask. All right. Will you marry me? Yes. <laughs> hey! Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I sort of tricked you into that. And I, I'm sorry. No, Go ahead. No. You come back out. Go ahead. No, the out. funny thing back is, it's, it's a wonderful <laughs> idea. No, you go ahead. You come back out. Back Look, out. Janie, would you really marry me? Who? Me? Hmm. Would you really ask me? You bet your life. <sighs> Look at me, everybody. I'm engaged. <laughs> Look at me, everybody. Oh, I suppose you think I've never been engaged before. Well, I have. I thought she had a date with you last night. Oh, not me. I thought she had a date with you. Oh, I'm getting sick of it. Sitting on our doorstep all night. I'm getting sick of it. Say, that rooster's fast. Look, brother, why mm. don't you go cut your throat? Mm, no, I don't think so. Hey. Huh? Well, look, there huh? she is. There she comes. Well, who's that with her? <laughs> <laughs> come on, Janie. Carry me. Now, come on, carry me. Okay. Now, carry me. Look out, everybody. Here I come. Am I too heavy? Why, you're as light as a feather. <laughs> <laughs> hello, Janie. Oh, hello. Oh! <gasps> Wait a Janie. I think maybe you better let me down. Easy. Sure. <laughs> well, what do you mean by coming around and making a scene? <laughs> I'll get to you later. Janie? I want you to tell this Harry guy here who you're really engaged to. Him. Him? Who? Mr. Richard Hamilton, Jr. Well, well, what about me? <laughs> I'm engaged to you, too. What? <laughs> you, you mean you're engaged to both of us? <laughs> I'm engaged to all three of you. But wait a minute, you can't be. <laughs> Why not? You all ask me. Janie. Look, can I see you alone for a minute? No, you can't. You don't have to raise your voice. Janie, if you were really engaged, you might have told me. Well, I don't see where it's any wrong of being engaged to three fellas than it is to two fellas. Janie, how could you do a thing like this? Why, well, you just met these two guys. Be quiet and let her make up her own That's mind. That's what I say, let her make up her own mind. Let her think. Now her... listen, Janie, Shh, leave her... her alone. Quiet. Shh, well, quiet. well, Shh. well... well What's the difference between a radio and a clothesline? Shh. Janie, 
I think maybe you better go on up to bed. But I haven't made up my mind who of you yet. Even. Even. But we could come back later when you're feeling better, Janie. Would you, Dick? Sure. Would you, Tom? What's well, all right with me? Would you, Harry? Sure, I would. Oh, you're wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. You certainly are a bunch of wonderful gentlemen. Well, here I go. Don't forget to come back, everybody. Everybody come back for breakfast. I'll be thinking up my mind. Thinking, thinking up my mind. Thinking, thinking, thinking up my mind. Go to sleep, Jamie. Dreaming, dreaming, dreaming up my mind. Me, 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 Janie. Me, Janie. Me, Janie. You just met these guys. You hardly know them. I'm your fella. You'll make you act phony, Janie. I'll make you happy. Take your fishing. Me, Janie. I'm your fella. Airplanes, Janie, all your life. Me, Janie. Take your fishing. All your life. Me, 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 me. Do you, Janie, take these three fellows to be your lawfully wedded husband? I do. And do you three fellows take this girl to be your lawfully wedded wife? We, we do. do. I now pronounce you the only solution. Goodbye, dear. I've got a rush, dear. I have to sell a million cars today. I owe all my success to you. Wait. I have to go buy a new airplane, dear, but I'll be home early and we'll fly to Chicago. No, no, wait. I'm staying home, dear. Somebody has to keep you happy while they're away. No, just a minute. This is ridiculous. I can't be married to all three of you. Well, then. Make, Make up, up your mind. mind. Make up my mind. Make up my mind. Make up my mind. Uh, sit down, Harry. Sit down, Tom. Uh, sit down, Mr. Hamilton. Jeannie will be right here. Thank you. Well, I, I don't know what anybody else thinks, but I think he's exciting. Don't you, Father? Mm -hmm. Don't you, Butch? Mm, I know which one I'd take. Thank oh, you, Butch. Hey, here she comes, ready or not. Any bets, fellas? Quiet. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. <clears throat> well, go ahead. <clears throat> which one is it? Um, Tom, you're a wonderful fella. Janie. Any girl would be lucky to get you, but we're not right together. You ought to marry the boss's daughter. Oh, I see. Harry, you're one of the most interesting fellas I've ever met. And one of the nicest. But you're crazy. Oh, sure. So I'm awfully glad to have met you. No trouble. Dick, we don't move in the same circles. You're what I've been dreaming about all my life. So if you still want me, I'd be very happy to be Mrs. Richard Hamilton, Jr. Janie. Oh, Janie, give me a kiss. Oh, my little girl. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Darling, let's not wait any longer. Let's drive to Gretna and get married right now. Right away? Yes. Well, all right, Mom. Oh, all right, Pop. Sure, go right ahead. But Travis doesn't get my coat like a good girl. All right. Goodbye, boys. Goodbye. Take care Goodbye. of my boy. Goodbye. She's always got except Butch. Another three years, and Butch will really surprise you. Your handkerchief. Have you got a handkerchief, Janie? Yes, I got one, Mom. Thanks. Goodbye. Don't drive too fast. No, I won't, Pop. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, Goodbye Pop. Goodbye, Janie. So long, Butch. Goodbye, Tom. So long, Tom. Congratulations, fella. I guess the best man won after all. Mind if I kiss the bride-to-be? I'll go right ahead. <laughs> Bye, Janie. Goodbye, Tom. I wish you all the happiness in the world. Ah, thank you. Well, goodbye, Harry. So long, Harry. Congratulations, fella. I think, uh, I think she's making a big mistake. Do you mind if I kiss her? No, go right ahead. Hey! What? You did it. Yeah. You did it just like before. Yeah. Hey, well, kiss me again. Let's see. Sure. Yeah. <gasps> Janie. Yeah. Hey, what is this? Uh, Dick. Dick, uh, come here and, and kiss me. All right. Nope. Nope what? 
No. Harry. Harry, have you got your motorcycle here? Sure, I Well, have. let's get it. Goodbye, Dick. I'm going with Harry. Hey, wait. I'll write you a letter, Dick. Janie, what's the matter? We don't ring bells. Come on, Janie. Goodbye, Pop. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, goodbye, Well, Janie made her great decision, and she's all set to live happily ever after. Alias Ginger Rogers, she returns now to the microphone with a triple escort of Burgess Meredith, George Murphy, and Alan Marshall. And did you ever see three better leading men in any play before, Mr. DeMille? Actually, Ginger, I, I don't think we've ever had three leading men in one of our plays before. Then I guess there's no precedent to guide us, fellas. We might persuade Mr. DeMille to decide it. Decide what? Well, let me explain, Ginger. Yeah? We were arguing about uh, which one of us should drive you home after the program. Oh. Now, you see, uh, Marshall and I figured <laughs> mm-hmm. that Meredith is out because he wins in the play. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Well, it's very simple, fellas. I'll decide. Mm, I, I thought you would. Oh, uh, Mr. DeMille, have you got your car here? My car? Why, Ginger, it's not only here, but you've made me feel 30 years younger. Well, before before we start, there's just one thing I'd like to say. I'd like to say a good word of praise for Lux Soap. Not that it needs one particularly, but, but it deserves the very best anyone can say. I've used Lux Soap myself for a long time, and I think it's really swell. You've got a lot of company there, Ginger. Lux Soap has made quite a few million others think the same way. Mr. DeMille, what have you got next week? Next week, Burgess, we'll present... Ronald Coleman, in one of his greatest screen triumphs. He'll star in a story that thrilled the world, first as a book, then as a motion picture. James Hilton's Lost Horizon. And besides having Ronald Coleman as the star, we'll present Donald Crisp and Lynn Carver in one of the most unusual plays that we've ever produced. So we'll hope to see you all in your regular seats next Monday night for this exciting drama of Tibet, the land of a lost horizon. It's a great story for radio, CB, and it's certainly in the right hands. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night. (laughs) Good night. Good night. You know, not every Tom, Dick, and Harry waits applause like that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before we close, May I voice for the Lux Radio Theater and our sponsor our gratitude and indebtedness to the radio team of Tom, Dick, and Harry for the use of their title on our presentation this evening. The radio team of Tom, Dick, and Harry, whose funny antics you must have heard every Monday night on another network, have made millions of new friends with their latest comedy and variety program called The Affairs of Tom, Dick, and Harry. Good luck, boys. Our best wishes, and again, thank you. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Ronald Coleman in Lost Horizon with Donald Crisp and Lynn Carver. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from... Hollywood. George Murphy appeared tonight through the courtesy of Metro Golden Mayor and Alan Marshall through the courtesy of David O. Selznick. Mr. Marshall will soon be seen in the picture Lydia, produced by Alexander Corder. Heard in tonight's play were Arthur Q. Bryan as the Justice of the Peace, Joe Cunningham and Noreen Gamill as Janie's parents, Gloria Blondell as Gertrude, Priscilla Lyon as Barbara, Edward Marr as Ice Cream Man, and Fred Mackay, B. Benaderet, Alan Wood, and Tyler McVeigh. Tonight's Lux Radio Theater production of Tom, Dick, and Harry has come to you with the good wishes of the makers of Lux Toilet Soap the beauty soap that nine out of ten screen stars use. Join us again next week. 
be part of the Coast to Coast audience, which will hear Ronald Coleman in James Hilton's Lost Horizon, with Donald Crisp and Lynn Carver. Until next week, then, when the Lux Radio Theater brings you the famous play, Lost Horizon. This is your announcer, Melville Ruick, bidding you all good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.